as you ponder all of what I have just said. So, in, in terms of sustainability, so just to give you some facts about how both logistics and packaging are impacting the um, the environment that we have. Because what we keep hearing is that the world is edging towards a, a precipice where if we don't do something about it, we will not have this world as we know it in the years to come. If we keep destroying our environment, we will have it no more. So just to give you some stats about uh, this, the MIT Institute um, says that, according to the researchers from the MIT Supply Chain Initiative, freight transportation, freight that's logistics, contributes to approximately 8% of the global greenhouse gas emissions. If you add warehousing to that, it comes to about 11%. Okay? So that, that's how bad we are um, as, as, as logistics and supply chain. Now this study, this study was done about two years ago. Just to show you how badly we are doing in terms of climate change, the, recent, the most recent report, which is 7th February this year, is telling us, this is maybe by a different organization, is telling us, uh, the question is, how much does transportation contribute to global greenhouse gas emissions? So it's saying that overall, CO2 emissions from transportation has increased by more than 70% since the year 1990. Um, and these emissions, of CO2 are because mainly of uh, burning fossil fuels. So as you know, fossil fuels, um, oils and gases are the most, um, are the biggest culprits to, um, to environmental degradation. So whatever you do that involves oil or involves gas, then you know you're in trouble. And that's why a lot of packaging has a lot of oil-based products and hence a lot of discussion even before um, my coming this, this afternoon has been centered about recycling and reusing and, and trying to get back um, what, you've, what you've produced back to the environment. Um, I think finally um, There's a question that is asked there before I go now to the to, to the bit to do with the packaging. They're asking now from a logistics point of view, what you can do to reduce pollution from vehicles and engines. Now for us, me and you. Number one, you can drive less, you can drive wise amongst ourselves that we can use to um, produce for ourselves as producers of products that we can then sell locally among ourselves exactly. or we can export to other markets. Yes. Um, as you've seen today, we've got many exhibitors who have got machinery for packaging, um, food products, uh, packaging other industrial products, for doing soaps uh, and so on. We have lots of flexible packaging and other packaging types around this um, arena. Mm -hmm. And there is so much that one, as an individual, can do by setting up their small industry. Because industry does not belong to the big players. Mm -hmm. Industries are for everyone. Mm -hmm. So you could set up your, your manufacturing um, facility based on your own taste of what you want to do and produce products and we were challenged today that you can you can you can just buy a sack of beans for example clean it up put it in a in a in a package um, of a smaller um, grammage or kilos and sell it out add some value and sell out this product and make some money 
So it's, it's something that the, the, um, the Far East, mm -hmm. the Chinese, the, the Indians and Asians have practiced throughout the, the ages. Yeah. It's something that is very alien to us as Africans. When we get money, as we've been told, we want to buy the next car, we want to build the next house, we want to marry the next wife. Yeah. There is so much that we can do. Um, if in 2007, through an act of parliament, yes. um, through the um, SPMA, which is the Supplies Practitioner Management uh, Act, which uh, was then reviewed um, in 2012, and it is the current act that is governing the profession of supply chain, um, procurement of supply chain, as well as logistics, all married together as supply chain management. Thank you. Helps organizations, businesses um, to move their goods and services from one point to the other. So we help industry, uh, packaging as an example, to move uh, all, the, all the, the requirements, the raw materials, from the sources of supply, where they import them from, or where they get them from locally, through the uh, um, upstream supply chain, to maybe a factory that will produce um, goods out of those products. Within that factory as well, we lend our support. Then we get that product through the logistic system, which is now the secondary distribution, up to the consumer, the final consumer who will take up that, that product. So that's the stream in which we work. And uh, it's very good, Mr. Nyongesa, that you saw it fit to bring in supply chain into this um, conversation because nothing moves without supply chain. Anything you have, that suit, nice suit you're wearing, the food you ate at lunchtime, uh, all the equipment that is in here right now, all the things that are being displayed, everything had to be moved from one place to another, right? And that movement is supply chain. So in short, supply chain covers four main areas. One, we do the planning. Do they think we'll do it for them? Why do you think that somebody else owes you manufacturing? Because we know that we need to manufacture. But whenever we have money, we are thinking of a new car, a new house, a new something else. I think we have enough cars on our roads. Ladies and gentlemen, from now onwards, as you come out of this room after these three days at this place, come out with an idea to add value to something for yourself. If there is anything to take home, and don't tell me you don't have money, because I have said you can start with one bag of maize and call it Wairimu maize and you just put it into a bag and you label it and you sell it and you start from there and we build it. Our role as government is to work with you, to support you, to encourage you and I think time has come for us to move in this direction.